listened to it for a song. I couldn't listen to it because I was I was somewhere. I think my world was like coming to it. But I wonder if she's related to Lindsay Kohler? Because Lindsay wrote, she wrote Freak Train. Or she did perform Freak Train. Because I tried to look it up to see if they're related because their last name's the same. Good evening, everyone, and it's good to see you all here tonight. Uh, let's all stand together as we open up with a word of prayer, and uh, we're going to open up and just uh, ask the Lord just to move tonight and uh, just ask Him to just uh, pour out His Spirit this evening. Amen. So I'm glad that uh, you're here this evening, and uh, we have um, uh, we are going to just have a, a, just a good time in His presence tonight. Amen. Let's all pray together tonight. Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful. Lord, we're grateful that we have this time to be in your presence gathered tonight. Father, we just ask that you'll just move and minister. And uh, Father, we give you uh, this time just to be in your presence. And we ask for your glory to come and move. Father, flow in our hearts and flow in this place tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, Milan's going to sing tonight. It's good to have Bishop Coleman here with us this evening in our service. And so, uh, since they're in town for, uh, uh, they did Emily's open house yesterday. That's what we said. Uh, Milan's going to lead and Caleb's going to preach tonight so uh, they can uh, be graded by uh, their dad in just a little bit, I guess. So, all right, let's sing together. I can do anything, and I can do all things, cause it's you who gives me strength, and nothing is impossible through you, blind eyes are open, and strongholds are broken, I can live in my faith, nothing is impossible. Thank you. 
can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength And nothing is impossible through you Blind eyes are open And strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible
Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that seems to wrench like me. And I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Sing that again, Amazing Grace. And amazing grace, and how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. No, I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind. Father, we just thank you for tonight, for your presence that is in this place. God, we just rest in who you are. We rest in your grace and your mercy that chased us down. Even when we didn't deserve it, Father, you sought after us with everything you have. And tonight, we give it all to you. We just ask that you would meet us here, Father. We ask that you would speak your words of truth over our life that your presence would move through and fro throughout this place, Father. We lift up all of our needs to you, Father. All of our joys, all of our victories, God, all of our fears, we lay them at your feet. We thank you for your freedom. Your freedom that saved us from the slavery of sin and fear, from the grip of death. We thank you for your freedom tonight. You are so worthy, Father. We say thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you unravel me and with the melody and you surround me with a song? Some deliverance and from my enemies and still all my fears are gone. Let's sing that again. You unravel me and you unravel me and with the melody and you surround me with the song of deliverance and of deliverance and from my enemies and still all my fears of God and I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child chosen me your love has called my name and I've been born again and I've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins from my mother's womb and from my mother's womb and you you have chosen me, and love has called my name. We've been born again, and I've been born again into your family, and your love flows through my veins. I see it out. I'm no longer. I'm no longer, and 
can be looking like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. And with my praise, with my praise, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I find my back with my faith. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And this is how I find my battles. And this is how I find my battles. And this is how I find my battles. And with my praise, and with my praise, this is how I find my battles. And this is how I find my battles. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I'm no longer a slave to fear, but I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just lift our hands up together this evening. Father, I thank you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that surrounds us, and thank you for the power of Christ tonight in this place. Oh, Lord, I thank you that we're surrounded by your presence. Thank you you envelop us uh, in your glory tonight, Jesus. Oh, we bless your holy, holy, holy name. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this evening. Amen. Thank you, uh, Amen. Well, tonight we want to take uh, just a moment and uh, pray together. Uh, remember uh, to pray uh, for uh, all the Kilbreth family, Claude and his, uh, all the family that was here. We had Vi's funeral on Friday, and uh, it was a uh, good turnout. So thank you to all that helped on Friday with uh, the dinner and serving and, um, and, and then just being there in support. We appreciate that. And uh, but keep uh, keep them up in your prayers. Pray for uh, Jeanette. She's re uh, recovering in the uh, uh, assisted living, and she needs your uh, continued prayers tonight. Uh, maybe there's one that would like to share a uh, prayer request with us. Uh, go ahead and share that this evening, and uh, we'll pray with you tonight. Is there anyone? Go ahead, Sister. Pray for Jeanette Barton. She starts chemo. <laughs> Yes, we'll pray for her tonight. Amen. Yes, go ahead. Um, just remember mom and dad um, and their body will be just be healed 
Assembly bodies. Also, um, I have a few things coming up um, this week that just kind of unspoken requests that I need. Um, we'll, we'll pray for you tonight. Amen. Amen. Any others tonight? Unspoken requests by lifting up your hands. The Lord knows all about those. Amen. Let's all pray together tonight. Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, Lord, we lift to you these needs. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're a miracle uh, meeting God tonight. That Father, when we come to you in faith and in prayer, that Lord, we have the assurance uh, that you receive our requests. You hear our prayers and Father, you send the answer. And God, tonight I just pray uh, that you would minister to these needs tonight. I pray, Father, for uh, healings and miracles. I pray, God, tonight that you would touch hearts uh, in this place tonight. And Father, I thank you that you never fail, that God, you always uh, make a way where there seems to be no way. So God, tonight we lift to you these needs, and I thank you, God, that you're making a way. You know, Father, I thank you that we'll hear testimonies of your goodness and your glory. And Father, we just uh, give these requests into your care. Father, you've heard these requests, these that have been spoken, Father. Those that lifted their hands and said, I have unspoken need. We know, Lord, that you hear them all, and you, Father, you see down into our innermost parts. So God, tonight we just ask that you would uh, help us through, uh, minister to these needs, and bring them to pass according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Well, let's receive our offering this evening, and uh, we appreciate those that are giving. Come on down, uh, uh, our ushers, and I appreciate every gift sown tonight, and uh, we know that uh, the Lord is a blessing and ministering, so thank you for giving, and as we sow tonight, we just uh, want to thank you for generously giving unto the Lord. Amen. So let's uh, bless our offering uh, tonight. Brother Clyde, would you bless our offering? Okay. Well, just some announcements. Remember uh, this week, uh, uh, take a bulletin on your way out. If you haven't got one, there's lots of good bulletin notes in there for you all. Uh, if you're out in the stores, there's the uh, list of uh, school supplies. If you'd like to help uh, us to help the GT kids uh, uh, get race supplies for um, uh, the Bindle schools for Jeanette's classroom, uh, we appreciate that. Also, um, this week, just uh, be praying Tuesday. We have prayer time at 9 in the morning in the sanctuary and if you can't make it here wherever you're at just say a prayer we have corporate prayer on tuesday so praying for you and uh, where you're at we can just pray and uh, know that you're having a agreement in your prayer wednesday night we have our uh, bible study uh, here we're talking about the feast of uh, the feast and how god has spoken to us in the prophetic uh, on Wednesday night, and uh, he has shown us uh, in prophetic ways of the times to come uh, through the Feast of Israel. And so we've got a couple of weeks, I'm going to do that, and then we're going to change over, uh, do uh, something else uh, coming up here a couple of weeks, and then we have youth and uh, kids on, and that on Wednesday nights. And then uh, we have our church picnic uh, that's going to happen on the 26th. It's always a great time uh, to be together and uh, celebrate that uh, and just have a good time celebrating family. Amen. 
All right. Well, tonight I'm going to have uh, Daryl come. He's going to sing for you, and, and Shelby and Deanne, they're going, to, they're going to do a special for you. Would you welcome them as they come to sing for you tonight? some weeds and after I had got out I seen how high the weeds were and you know there is spiders in there and so when we come back to the car uh, I was coming around next to the car real fast trying to get in that car and I grabbed a hold of the door and then and then I hit me right here in the head it cracked right here in the head I mean I hit it hard and I got in the car and and, <laughs> and Daryl said I really feel for you because I heard that and he reached over and he laid his hands on me he prayed for me and asked the Lord to not let it, not, not let me be hurt bad. And you know, I, and, and it's not sore, and I got a big old green and purple place, it's about an inch and a half long, a uh, lot there. And uh, I didn't get a headache or nothing, haven't had a headache, hurt or anything. Well, Just like it never happened. I thank God yeah. for what he did for me right there that day, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to do a song called Robe and Crown. You know not the day when the Lord said, call your soul away if you labor, striving for the right. You said, wear a robe and cry. Yeah. Watching therefore, you know not the day when the Lord said, call your soul away. Trump sounds, sound. when that trump sounds, I'm gonna wear a crown, I'm gonna wear a crown, just as soon as the beast strikes, I'm gonna lay down my heavy burden, gonna pull on my robe and glory, gonna shout, tell my story, soon as I can see Jesus, gonna tell them all about my trouble, we sell our robe and crown. I'm gonna wear a crown. I'm gonna wear a crown. When the trumpet sounds. When the trumpet sounds. I'm gonna wear a crown. I'm gonna wear a crown. Just as soon as I be shot. I'm gonna lay down my heavy burden. Gonna pull on my robe and glory. Gonna sound and tell them my story. Soon as I can see Jesus. Gonna tell them all about my. Trouble, we sell a rope and crown. Watching, therefore, you know not the day when the Lord said, Call your soul away if you labor, striving for the right. You sell a rope and crown. I'm gonna wear a crown. I'm gonna wear a crown. I'm gonna wear a crown when the trumpet sounds. When that trumpet, trumpet, trumpet sounds, I'm gonna wear a crown. I'm gonna wear a crown just as soon as the beast strikes. I'm gonna lay down my heavy burden, gonna pull on my robe and glory, gonna shout and tell my story. Soon as I can see Jesus, gonna tell them all about our trouble. We sell our robe. I'm gonna wear a crown. I'm gonna wear a crown. When that trumpet sounds. When that trumpet sounds. I'm gonna wear a crown. I'm gonna wear a crown. Just as soon as the beast strikes, I'm gonna lay down my heavy 
Good ain't gonna pull my robe in. Glory gonna shine till my story. Soon as I can see, Jesus is gonna tell them all about my trouble. We still have a robe and crown. I'm gonna wear a crown. I'm gonna wear a crown. When that trumpet sounds, when that trumpet sounds, I'm gonna wear a crown. I'm gonna wear a crown. Just as soon as the beast strikes, I am gonna lay them heavy. But ain't gonna pull on the robe and glory gonna shout to tell my story. Soon as I can see, Jesus gonna tell them all about my trouble. We sell a robe and crown. It's a great song. Amen. 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 You may be seated here tonight. All right. Uh, Caleb is going to come tonight and he's going to bless you with some preaching tonight. Uh, amen. So come on, Caleb. Well, good morning or good night or good evening. One of those. How's it going for everyone tonight? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Excited to be preaching to my church tonight. Amen. Are you ready for the word tonight? I'm excited. I can believe that God's got a word for me to uh, preach to you guys. And uh, I know that uh, it's going to be a powerful one indeed. So I'm going to get my notes here real quick. Are you happy to be in God's house tonight? I am excited to preach tonight because I have my Mimi all the way from uh, the Upper Peninsula. Uh, I know my papa hasn't been feeling well today, so I think he uh, is resting, but uh, most of you know her as Pat Hawley, but I've always known her as Mimi, and so I'm super excited. She's always rooting me on. She's always telling me uh, probably the most important words that someone's ever spoke life over me, and I know my cousin Bailey over there knows these words that I'm about to say, but every time she ends a conversation with me, she says, Jesus, watch over you. And that's always, always, always been dear to my heart. And I appreciate those words. And I'm thankful to have my other set of grandparents. Now they're from the area. So most of you, uh, most all of you see them a lot. Uh, my Nana and my Grampy, uh, it is excited to have them there. But most importantly, it is excited to have my parents here, uh, here from Texas. Uh, now they are no stranger to Michigan. Uh, most of you know, my dad served in the National or the district office for 24, 25 years, uh, first as a district youth director. He, we were talking about it the other day. Uh, he saw the old PYPA sign. I got it hanging on our uh, youth room. And, and some people look at me and say, man, you should put that away. That's old stuff. And I said, I don't know. I kind of like it. You know, because not many people know that my dad was the very last PYPA president to serve at Michigan, because then they changed it to district youth director. And so it's kind of very, very dear to my heart. And I like that. But, uh, and my mother, of course, has been uh, there supporting and working alongside of him. And both of them are dynamic duo. And I just hope and pray that my wife and I can at least be half of what they've, they've, uh, they've accomplished in the ministries so far and, 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 and set directions and steps, uh, new ones for us as well too, but I'm happy now that, you know, they're serving in Texas as their general secretary, um, and his secretary. So my mom serves as a secretary. It's kind of gross because he always looks at me and says, man, my secretary's hot. <laughs> so, uh, I always kind of scratch my head at that. Um, it's, it's quite funny because my dad will, will call me. Uh, my first year at Mester College, I actually got a job at the national office. I was a graphic designer for about a year, year and a half down there. And it's funny because he'll call me and he'll say, you know that one room or you know that one place or you know that one thing and, and do you know where that's at? No, dad, it's not there. It's in the other room. And, and it's like I'm working right alongside of him and we get to talk about the things. And it's a, it's a neat journey how God kind of puts things together uh, piece by piece. And so uh, my Aunt Julie, of course, is with us tonight as well. Uh, she's one of my biggest supporters in our ministry, uh, and I love her dearly for being uh, a supporter in my life. Uh, and then, of course, it's been awesome having my brother-in-law, Naaman, over there uh, supporting his Tommy Hill figure. And so he, uh, he, he was very proud to have that uh, wearing today. So I just want to give a shout out to him. Now, my other brother-in-law left yesterday to go back to California because in California, they start school 
school in two days. So Michigan's better. No, I'm just kidding. He's not getting out any earlier, too. They end on June 15th. So that is a long, long year. And Naaman, uh, by the call of God, has decided after camp that he felt called to be in the internship at the district office, where he'll be serving along with Bishop Skirvin and, um, and, and two other ones that are serving as well, too. And we'll be working with, uh, with James uh, and Jessica as well, too. So it's just, uh, and my sister. Don't want to forget my baby sister. She graduated this year, uh, and she graduated all the way in Virginia. She was doing online at Liberty University, and I'm excited to see where God takes her. Uh, I always love to get a big hug from her. But I will say, if you see this mark on my shirt, I even changed my shirt during lunchtime to make sure I didn't get the shirt dirty. And I literally, at 5.58, walked back to my house to put my watch on, and there she's got her lipstick in her hand, and I rubbed right by her as I was walking out the door. This is not blood. I promise. This is lipstick. So that happened. But do you love the Lord tonight? Do you love the Lord always? I'm so glad to be preaching to you guys. As um, as you get your Bibles ready, I'm going to be preaching out of Mark chapter 4, uh, 35 through 41. Um, Mark chapter 4, 35 through 30, 41, excuse me. I'm going to be reading a couple different uh, versions tonight. Uh, as you're opening your Bible, you're probably familiar with this uh, bit of scripture. Uh, this is, of course, is the story of Jesus on the boat when the storm was happening. But I want to dig a little deeper tonight. Is that all right? Is it all right if I, if I get to preaching? Because I, I, I'm raring to go and I'm excited to preach because the Lord has placed a uh, passion on my heart tonight for this message. So uh, Mark 4, 35 through 41, and it says, As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out leaving the crowds behind, although all their boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Peace. Everybody say peace. Peace be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and waves obey him. Will you bow your heads with me tonight? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful weather, God. We thank you for this beautiful atmosphere that your Holy Spirit has brought down upon this place, God. God, we ask right now to open the floodgates of heaven. I ask right now that you will speak through me, God, that you will just take this message to touch someone tonight, Father God. God, that you use somebody in here, Lord, to, to start something and stir something up in this church, God. God, that we are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, going out each day about our lives, Lord, touching people, telling people about you you, being the image of you, Christ, Father. God, we, we ask you right now that as we get into the scripture tonight, as we get into the word, that you will remind us that no matter what storm, no matter what circumstance, no matter, no matter what situations we may face, there is still peace in the storm. And we praise you and we thank you. And Heavenly Father, utmost, most importantly, we thank you so much for sending your son down to die here on the cross, Lord God, that you will have a bridge for us, that, that you will love us, and, and, and we will come to you in heaven once again, God, Father God. And we praise you for that. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I'm going to go ahead and read a different version of this uh, passage uh, in Mark chapter 4, 35 through 30, uh, 41. It says, Late that day he said to them, Let's go across to the other side. They took him in the boat as he was. Other boats came along. A huge storm came up. Waves poured into the boat, threatening to sink it. And Jesus was in the stern, a head on a pillow, sleeping. They rose, uh, they ro rose to him, saying, Teacher, is it nothing to you that we're going down? 
Have you, have you ever felt so many times in your life where you've been in a situation and you sat there and you can look up into the so- sky and, and pray, God, do you even care? Or God, do you even hear my prayers or, or know what I'm going through? Or God, where are you at that point? And I believe that same circumstance re- uh, applies to the disciples here. Awake now, he told the wind to pipe down and said to the sea, quiet. Or the, the word that I want to preach tonight is peace. Settle down. Peace. Be still. The the wind ran out of breath. The sea became smooth as glass. Jesus uh, uh, turned to the disciples. Why are you such cowards? Don't you have any faith at all? They were in absolute awe, staggered. Who is this anyway, they asked. The wind and the sea even obey at his call. And I just really want to dig into the scripture tonight. Now, to give you a little background on me and my wife, Milan, I even got a picture in here of us two. This was our engagement pictures taken from uh, my, my sister. And this is my bookmark from my Bible. Now, we've been married for almost two years now. In fact, on the 2nd of September is going to be our two-year anniversary. And I'm very excited about that. Um, we, ha- we weren't able to uh, celebrate our one-year anniversary because of Hurricane Harvey, but I'm very excited to to not have any hurricanes unless a tornado goes through here, which I pray to God that doesn't happen. <laughs> and so uh, I'm, I'm excited to be with her for two years and for many, 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 many until I die. And uh, within this process, I've already learned so much. You see, I've, I've learned that my wife lied before we were married, before our wedding. She lied saying that she couldn't cook which in fact she can. Uh, I learned that very quick. And uh, I've also learned that whatever I thought could be a decoration, you could throw that out the window. Uh, I've learned to keep the toilet seat down. Uh, That was a big one that I think it was a bad habit that was very hard to break. And it's funny, I'll be in the guys' restrooms and public bathrooms and I catch myself doing that. I'm like, what in the world's going on here? Uh, But one thing I picked up on her is her mannerisms, her her actions. The 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 one particular mannerisms that my wife does is she she makes these noises, and, and and the noises she makes is the mood that she's in. Uh, when she's happy, she breathes, or really excited like a dog, and she she does the little dance, and and it's kind of like uh, my my dog. She's <laughs> She's really excited and getting all jittered up, and and when she's sad, she whines like a little pucky, puppy. Uh, these are these are actual noises. I'm not not. I'm gonna get in trouble for this later, but it goes. It goes to my message. Uh, she makes this. You see, this just actually started happening uh, at our wedding. Her sister did one of the speeches for the maid of honors, and and uh, she was talking about this frog noise. And I was just like, "What is they talking about this frog? I've never heard of this frog noise." I kid you not. This year, I'm sitting in the other room, and I hear like a, a a frog croaking, and I'm going, "What in the world is that?" And 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 that's when she's nervous. You know, all these different things, these different words, these different sayings go on to these different moods and many more. But there's one noise she makes that she's just, it's when she's just plain sickened or or disgusted or there's something that's gross. Uh, I just hear just go, ugh. Like it's, it's just a weird, it's not like a uck or a gross. It's like a, ugh, ugh, ugh. I started picking up on these things very quickly. And, and when we were on our honeymoon, we went on a cruise. Uh, Back when we got married, uh, she I could definitely hear that as we were walking through the boat, uh, even the second time we were on a cruise, when the boat was rocking on there, I, and she was feeling a little seasick, I could hear her behind me just going, ugh. ugh. And I just thought that was the weirdest thing ever. And so I picked up on those, but... But I, but but it was just it was just funny that a little bit of of a, of a boat rock could have her make the same. And so tonight I want to speak about three different points tonight. Uh, I, I want to talk about the peace, a peaceful boat, a peaceful boat. And I want to talk about three uh, different things that the Bible, this scripture, has spoken to me on where we should rely our peace on. So I want you to look to your neighbor and I want you to ask him, Are you in a peaceful boat? Husbands and wives, please be careful if you're looking right at them. Now turn to your other neighbor. I want you to look at them and say, are you in a peaceful boat? 
So we read the scripture, we've learned a little bit more about my wife, and, and, and the first uh, point I want to speak about tonight is uh, uh, where you need to find peace in the boat is you need to, first of all, find peace in the storm. You see, Paul once commanded, be anxious for nothing. This is quite the command, a commandment to keep. He's saying here in the scripture, we are not to have anxiety, we are not to have worry, we are not to have nervousness, we are not to be a fretfulness or, 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 and have fear. No matter what our situation or circumstances are, there is no need to be anxious. Thus, we are not to be anxious. Worrying does not help. We cannot change the situation for the good by worrying. Often worrying makes the situation worse. We get sicker, more irritable, and less likely to think clearly. So Pastor Caleb, what should we focus on then? Our focus should be on eternal life. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow may never get here. We aren't promised tomorrow. Tomorrow may not happen like, like how we are worrying it, it will. We have enough issues today to deal with. If we worry about tomorrow's potential problems, then we might not deal with the issues of today. You see, I love what Christ says here in the scripture. He says, peace, be still. He could have just said, be still. And that could have been it. But instead, he said, peace, the definition of peace is to have freedom from disturbance, quiet, and tranquility. To have peace from the storm is to have freedom from the disturbance of the storm. This could be drugs. It could be friends you hang out with. It could be alcohol, and so on and so forth. If you want to have peace from negativity, stop hanging out with negative people. Come on, I'm about to preach tonight. That's a good one. That's just a small thing. If you want to stop drinking, stop hanging out with alcoholics. Amen. If you want to have peace, start putting yourselves in peaceful situations that draw you away from the disturbance that life could bring you. Find peace in the storm. My second point tonight, and I'm going to preach real quick. I'm just going to get right to the point. I say that every time. It always ends up an hour. I'm just kidding. It doesn't end up an hour. But the second point tonight is peace in God. Turn to your neighbor and say, peace in God. Now turn to your other neighbor while I'm trying to get this water open and say, peace in God. You got to have peace in God. Revelations 22, 13, that states, we all know the verse is pretty simple, that he is the Alpha and the Omega. Alpha is the first letter in the Greek uh, uh, alphabet. Surprising fact about Pastor Milan and I, we took Greek at Messenger College. Don't ask me for any questions or any answers on that because I can't remember any of it. But we did take, actually I do remember a little bit of it, but don't ask Pastor Milan. She just copied off my, my stuff. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek, Greek alphabet, and omega is the last. So Jesus is saying that he is the first and the last, the beginning and the end, which means he is internal and present with us at all times in all places. Jesus is first has two meanings. It means Jesus is before all things, but it also means that Jesus Jesus is better than all things. Since Jesus is first in everything, we can trust him for everything. Whatever it is we're worried about, God is bigger. Whatever problems we face, God is stronger. Whatever we strive for in the world, God is better. You see, Jesus is first in all things, which means we can trust him. And that trust brings us peace. The Apostle Paul said that if God is for us, who can be against us? Can any force or power stand against us if God is on our side? No! 
Because God is bigger and God is stronger because God is first. Come on, say with me tonight. God is first. Paul says we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. And he says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Not any alcohol, not any drug addiction, not any bad relationship, not any uh, uh, bad situation, not any job, not any money. It doesn't matter how rich you are in life. Those things cannot give you the strength that you need to obtain yourself in life to give you peace. He gives us strength. He gives us peace. We can do all things through Christ. The empty grave, it tells us that God is even greater and stronger and more powerful than death, which means there really is nothing, nothing, church, I'm telling you, nothing that can stand against God. And if God is with us, then we can be confident and at peace in all circumstances and in all situations of life. So in all things, God goes before us, which means that wherever we are in life and whatever, every stress or problems we face, God is already there. He's already there to meet you head on. God has been there and God is there waiting to help us find peace. Come on, I'm preaching about peace tonight. Psalms 139.5, it says, you go before me and you go behind me. You have laid your hand upon me. Come on, I'm preaching tonight. That's a good scripture right there. You go before me and behind me and he even has your hand upon you. God is before us. So no matter what, what we face we are facing it with God who already knows he already knows come on we're talking about a God that knows every hair on your head so if he knows every hair on your head he knows the situations and the plan for our future you see we can be at peace with ourselves if we will trust that God is first but pastor Caleb Pastor Caleb, I feel like I've done these things. I feel like I've done these things, but I feel as though I, I still don't have peace in my life. I feel like it's still hard to hear God or to know what his will is for me. Church, let me tell you a story going back to the situation when Milan could feel the boat rock. You see, I noticed something that day, and she can be my witness because I told her about it. I noticed that every time the lower you went on the boat, the more you felt the waves in the boat rocking. That's naturally why people buy rooms up top. And church, let me tell you something tonight. I noticed something that the higher I got up on the boat, the less rockiness, the less sickness, the less just irritableness I felt. So I want to pose to you my third point tonight. I'm, I'm getting ready to explode here. My, my third point tonight is, are you, if you're feeling like, like Pastor Caleb, I've done all these things. I, I feel like that life is still hitting me hard. I feel as though I don't have peace in my life. I feel like I don't hear from God. I, I don't hear his will for me. My question to you, you tonight is, are you on the right level? Come on, church. I'm talking about the level with God. I'm not talking and challenging your relationship with God. I'm talking about your season that, that, that life has put you in. Are you doing the necessary steps to get to the right level and be above those circumstances? It, it sounds strange to some of us because most of us, in, including today's church, are living, and you've heard me say it before, Burger King generation. You ought to have it your own way. Click it and get it, generation, but life is not like that. I spoke on it two weeks ago. Things happen for 
for a reason. They happen because you're going to go through seasons of unhappiness, happiness married to anybody, working at any job, and pastoring any church. They're just going to get on your nerves. But God never intends us to be dominated by the hard knock life that, that, that life deals us because he sent his son, Jesus, to bring us to another level of life. Another level of life. He calls it abundant life. I know some of you remember me preaching on that last month. Abundant life. Jesus said in John 10, 10, he says, I have come that they may have life and have it to what? To its fullest. So a lot of people come to Jesus and they expect to be immediately swept off their feet. Gimme, gimme, gimme. A life of privilege as though God owes us something. Something because they think God exists to give them whatever they want, they desire. But I want to challenge you tonight, church, and ask you, are you on the right level? Have you checked yourself? Have you prayed out to God in your situations? God, what is it in my life that needs to be changed to get to that point where I'm not feeling the rockiness? God, who is it that I need to confront that I've been having this anger and this jealousy to that'll get me off of this level, that'll get me on top of the boat? God, what is it? What is it holding me back from your blessings? What is it that I need to do? Who is it that I need to tell about Jesus? Are you on the right level? with God and as I'm closing tonight if I can have Stephanie come forward did a pretty good job are you on the right level with God come on somebody I'm talking about abundant life Come on, somebody. I want everybody to raise their hands right now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, remember, I am in charge yes. of your life. Yes. Remember, always put me first. And when you put me first, you will be a winner. I will see to it that you will inherit the kingdom if you will continue to say, God, here yes, I am, Jesus. use me. I will use you, yes, and Jesus. you will be a blessing to many souls. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, church. Just raise your hands right now and thank him for that word. Come on. You heard it. He is in control. He is in control of your life. We're speaking about that right now. No matter what you're facing, no matter what problems that you may have in your life, it is not bigger. It's not greater and it's not stronger than God himself. Come on. God is worthy to be praised. It might seem like it's taken him a while, but God knows your limits and he knows at his timing you will be delivered you will be blessed whatever it is come on i, I want to praise him and thank him tonight come on just shout at his name jesus jesus you're so good jesus you're so good you take care of me you 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 help me come on aren't you thankful for what he's done to your family aren't you thankful for for those bad situations he's pulled you out of aren't you thankful for the open doors in your life that he's open that he's welcomed you in come on praise him tonight hallelujah 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 jesus you're worthy jesus you're worthy church i'm talking about peace i'm talking about having peace in the storm 
I'm talking about having peace. Peace in God. And I'm talking about, are you on the right level with him? You see, in the scripture, the, 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 the disciples were crowded by fear. They were afraid from what they saw and didn't have any faith with what they already knew. Now, don't get me wrong. None of us here are perfect. Neither were the disciples, but we're all going to have our doubts every once in a while. But if we continue to ride the boat of life at the bottom of the boat, knowing that there is a higher place, knowing there's a higher purpose, knowing there's a higher calling, then we are going to continue to live in a life in a storm. If we are on the right level with God, then we don't know God's real intention for us. God is not a father of handouts or, or wish lists. And don't, don't get me wrong, God's going to bless you in his own accord, according to his will. But don't look at God as a God who's going to gimme, gimme and hand out and, and continue to fill your wish list. He is a father of love and we may not understand why we are going through the seasons we are but I know that I am on the right level with God to the point that I know that no matter what circumstance no matter what situations I face no matter what season I'm in God is already there and already has answered to my chaos and my needs there's another scripture that I love that's in the Bible we've read about how Jesus says peace be still but remember there's another scripture that says be still and know that I am the Lord come on that's not a coincidence there that was on purpose God knows what you need. He knows the word that you need each day and each out. That's why it's crazy how the fact that in the Bible, there's 365 different scriptures that say what? Fear not. So no matter what you're facing, no matter what worry, no matter what anxiety, I pray right now, if there's somebody in this building right now, I rebuke the spirit of anxiety. I rebuke the spirit of weariness. I, I, I pray right now for the spirit of peace and that somebody's life that's sitting in this building today, right now, peace be still. Peace be still. I'm praying for somebody right now tonight that is struggling with having peace in a situation with God, saying, God, why haven't you uh, come down and fix my situation where are you at right now father god but i pray right now for the spirit of peace to be still and know that he is god and the spirit of, of peace to understand that god is going to come at his timing no matter what happens god is going to hold you and he is going to be there every step of every situation i pray right now for the spirit of the right level as crazy as that seems there's somebody in here that's been questioning God am I on the same page with you am I am I on your will is it me or is it you father I pray right now and and I encourage this person that God is speaking to them right now of the spirit of listening and, and co confirmation to know that God is there no matter what you're gonna face you are on the right level with God to continue his will pushing the plow pushing going forward and not looking back I'm off I'm often reminded when I preach and I read this scripture and I think about it about the situation about me coming me and Milan coming to glad tidings I pastor Brian can be a, a witness to this uh, about a year and a half ago before we agreed to be here pastor Brian when pastor Mark had left the church had called and said, I want you to be our new youth pastor. Well, God had a different thing planned. 
he, he, he had led us to Houston where we served there for a year and a half. And by God, we went through a storm. Most of you know we, we witnessed a hurricane. My wife makes fun of me because I say it all the time. Well, I'm often reminded when I walk out and I look at my driveway and my car's not sitting there. So it's hard not to think about that. But God gave me peace in a situation that, that I didn't think I could find peace afterwards. A situation that flipped me upside down and turned me inside out. And I could have sat there and been mad and questioned God's situation that was the, the situation that was before me. But I learned to rely on God and I kept moving and moving and moving. And I know this church witnessed that in the youth department and the kids department. You guys went a year and a half without having a, a, a youth pastor. And it's crazy to think about this, that the storm that the church might have witnessed with, now, now you've had helpers, you've had people fill in, but I know Pastor Brian spoke, it just wasn't the same as having somebody there dedicated. And it might have seemed like you were going through a storm, but what was set in motion a year and a half before February 4th, 2018, the first day I stepped foot on this campus, Milan came on a plane. I came on a truck with me and my dad in the front seat and my dog, and there was no room for any of us. Just saying. Just kidding. But February 4th, 2018, God knew that what wasn't then a wish list to come home to, to work in the full-time ministry, all of those perks, what wasn't his will then had to go through a storm, found peace in the storm, because I'll tell you what, if I came to this church a year and a half ago and I said, you know what, forget it, I'm coming to Michigan, I'm working here, this is where, where I feel like I'm meant to be, blah, 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 you wouldn't have gotten the same youth pastor. I'll tell you what, it's not like I, I was bitter or angry or, or, or mad, but I learned some things. And I found out that no matter what situations I face in the storm, no matter what situations I face in a workplace, no matter what situation we face in our marriage, no matter what situation we face in our family, that there is still peace. And God is still there. He's still there every step that you take. And I just think it's hilarious that a year and a half later, here we are, standing here, speaking about peace together at Glad Tidings Tabernacle. I want you to stand tonight. That wasn't on my notes. That's just something that the Lord placed in my heart. And I want to open the altars at this time. I, I don't know if there's... I, I feel like God's calling uh, for an open prayer time up here. There's somebody here that is going through a storm in their life that they need to find peace in. There's somebody out there that needs to find peace with God questioning God the things that are happening and not understand why it's happening and I want to pray for those people who are wondering if they're on the right level so at this time I want you guys to come forward and pray if you got a need in your life if it's a physical need if it's a spiritual need come on forward God is saying hey, this is the time remember we're not promised tomorrow this is the time to come and set aside prayer time with the Lord. So come forward and meet those needs. And I'm going to pray over you as you guys are coming forward. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for peace. God, we thank you, God, for, for pulling us out of some of those situations. But God, we thank you for learning from those situations. We thank you, God, for giving us peace in the middle of a storm, God. God, even though that we were confused, even though we, we didn't know what was going on, God, I don't know what the situation is out here, Father God, in the crowd, whatever storm that, that, that we've made face, I thank you for peace. I thank you for the spirit of peace and for your Holy Spirit protecting our families and our loved ones, God. 
And right now we come to you in a time at the altar to lay it all down and give it all to you, Father. In your name, in your name. If I can get some prayer warriors to come up forward to pray for Sister Brewer up here. The storm surrounding me, let it break, and that your name. 